A rogue's welcome. Welcome to the rogue's gallery, everybody. You guys think they're going to change any of the chapter names? Because, um... They've already, like, in the remake, they've already shown that they're changing some of the, like, text. Like, they changed, um, Bowser's airhead to Lunkhead, which I think Lunkhead is funnier. Please wake up, sir. town you've been speaking of has come into view. Look, that's Rogport. Oh! oh. It's been, I want to say, probably five or six years since I actually played through this entire game. It's been a while. And, uh, I've only ever beaten it once. I've gotten to the end many- th I've gotten to the ending area many times, though. For the longest time, I actually didn't know how to play RPGs, so I kept, um... I kept pumping all my level-ups into HP. And it wasn't until I was like 11 or 12 when I realized, uh, maybe I should try pumping it into like flower and badge points to see if that'll do anything to help me. Because you that's the thing with RPGs is that they're in usually intrinsically designed to where if you just like tank yourself with health, you can get to the end, but you can't beat the final boss. That's the like fun caveat that they set up. Like seven, Final Fantasy VII did that. So I've, I've played through the entire game just to get to... Um, the ending area and find out that like uh the game just does not like take easy hits for you it does not give you an easy time if you go into the final boss super under leveled here's the best character in all of media lord crump i love him i actually do like him a lot he's fun did we see him in yes we did and he looked really nice actually <laughs> Out of the way, you scallywag. Move your ever loving bones. Buy me a fight. Gawkin. <laughs> Ain't nothing so fun than watching some poor bloke have it out with a missus, eh? Am I right, mate? That's probably gonna get changed, to be honest. <laughs> Yikes, looks like trouble over there. Probably best not to get involved. Hmm. I wouldn't meddle with other people's problems in this town, even if I had an extra life. I will go and try it out just to fuck with people. I could go anywhere with you fucking assholes. Ooh. Fuck you! I wish Crump was just more, uh... Aggressive, like... If he had, like, a sailor mouth, like a fucking right... If he was a right bastard, basically, I'd be happier. Can't flee this fight. Out of time, Mr. Man. Alright, let's... how you can tell I'm already great at this game. Oh shit, I messed up the timing. You did it! You did it, yes! And you got star points! I bet you know, but these things are called star points when you win battles. You go up a level if you get a hundred. Why, thank you, I know. I've played an RPG before. So it's interesting that they're doing like a Thousand Year Door remake before a uh, 64 remake though. Because 64 remake kind of needs it more. This game still kind of looks okay. However, <laughs> I'm, I, I refuse to believe that Nintendo's like blind to how much Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door costs on eBay. You know? Which the, the price of that has already gone down dramatically because of the remake. It's awesome. I'm so happy about that. Because this copy is kind of, like, slowly dying. And, um... I'd like to get a replacement at some point. And kind of, like, put this one in a picture frame and, like, cryo-freeze it or something. Also, I'm, like, missing a bunch of parts to it. I don't have the manual anymore, unfortunately. Where'd they go? You, Johnson, did you see them? Did anyone? Oh. What the fuck, man? What do I pay you guys for? What do we pay you for? Oh, 
Wow, Mister, you totally saved me. Thank you. I've just got to give you an award. I think it's probably more because it's popular than needing it. No, yeah, it's definitely because it's a very popular game. But, you know, I... Personally, I kind of wish that they did 64 first, because I like a lot more about 64 mechanically than I do a Thousand Year Door. But, I mean, I'm not upset that, they remake, that they're that they remaking Thousand Year Door, obviously. Like, I'm super excited about that. <laughs> I am super curious about, like, how it'll feel, because it... Like, the way that they've already... Sh the stuff they've already shown, they've already changed it enough to make it feel kind of fresh for me. I do love that they were, they kept the fucking background cutscene in this. I was so I was so worried that if they did remake it, that they'd um remove that entirely. Hopefully, they'll go back and remake that one if this one does well. Yeah, I hope so. I guarantee you, they like they were planning on like announcing the remake of Thousand Year Door way later, like probably closer to its release. But then they saw how hyped people were for Paper Mario 64 being put on Switch Online. And they were like, okay, no, we, could, we should probably announce that now. Get people, keep that, like, momentum going. I've seen some people be really weirdly conspiratorial about it. Being like, okay, if this one sells poorly, they're never going to make another game like this again, ever. I don't know if I believe that entirely. I'd kind of have to really see that they're in, like, person to, to really believe it. But I've also seen like the flip side where it's like if this sells really well, they'll they'll go back to it, guys. We swear this time. I'm like, eh, I, I don't think so. I just I don't think so. I think they'll be more interested in trying it out. They'll like start injecting more elements of it back into the games, but I don't think they'll go wholesale back to like the traditional Paper Mario RPG style. Yeah, I mean it's a gamble with Nintendo. They'll either make what they'll either do is they'll either go full force into, like, back into, like, the, the RPG style of, like, Mario RPG and Paper Mario's original three. Because I've been seeing, like, a, the, the opinion of Super Paper Mario shift dramatically online in the last ten years. Because I remember back in, like, 2014, 2015, if you said you liked Super, you were, like, people would look at you just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You killed my family. How dare you say Super Paper Mario is good? Super Paper Mario is shit. You are a horrible person for liking that. And now I'm seeing people say, like, no, okay, well, Super Paper Mario is, like, an underrated classic now. Because we're having, like, a bunch of new, a new generation of children on, online, and now people are, people's perspectives are going to slowly change. It's always fascinating when that happens, when you see, like, people be, uh, the, the, the general opinion kind of change because the younger people are coming online. And, I mean, this Thousand Year Door remake will be the first time that they acknowledge, uh, Toadsworth. I think since the original, probably? Either that or one of the, the Mario and Luigi games. But yeah, they've kind of forgotten about him. Which I know a lot of people like him, but, uh, I've really only ever known him from this game. Although, I guess that's not true. The, the fact that they put uh, Mario Sunshine on, on Switch as well, through the Mario 3D All-Stars pack, Kind of, um, kind of means that they also acknowledged him in that too, because he was like in the initial cutscene. But like Toadsworth is super prominent in this game, at least. So, what does everyone think about Mario Wonder? By the way, so I, I when it was first revealed, I was like, oh, this kind of looks bad. I'm, I don't know if I'll like it. I don't know if I'll play it. But as, like, more things came out about it, I was like, okay, well, my opinion's slowly shifting, and now I'm actually, like, super excited for it. Because, uh, I, w I really hated the idea of those talking flowers, but now I'm kind of warming up to them. I think they're kind of cute. I'll probably play them for a bit. I'll play with them on for, like, a little bit, but if I if they are too irritating to me, if they make too many stupid quips, then I'll probably uh, disable them. Cause I, I've heard, I've seen reports that you can disable them in the options. But yeah.
Alright, we're not gonna go find your professor, you fucking bitch. We're gonna go talk to her. Hey! You two, not another step. Don't come this way. Part of me wonders as to, like, why Nintendo's deciding to, to just, like, HD port all of the GameCube titles to, to the Switch instead of just, like, doing GameCube online. But at the same time, um, I'm not gonna argue about it. I'm not gonna complain about it. Because, um, if they didn't do that, then it would just be, like, a third expansion pack or a third fucking Switch Online version that I would not want to pay for. So I don't, I don't really even want to, like... I'm saying pretty much blind. It's probably going to be good, but I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the art style. I dig what they're going for, but not the execution, I guess. Yeah, me too. I'm not exactly a huge fan of, like, how kind of plasticky everything looks. I can't... This is a controversial opinion, but I really, really like the art direction of, um... Modern Paper Mario. It was always a big gripe for me as a kid that, like, Paper Mario never looked like paper. Like, the original game had nothing to do with paper. Uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door kind of leaned into it a little bit more, and then had all the paper mechanics. But it didn't st it still didn't look like paper. It looked like a comic, which is awesome. But, yeah, it's I, It's fucking insane to me, genuinely. It's insane that people are bitching that Paper Mario is looking like paper, as if, like, that's not half the fucking name of the game. You know, it's insane to me that people are like, well, I don't like the paper aesthetic they're leaning into it. It's like, it's, it's fucking called Paper Mario. What the fuck did you... <sighs> I don't know. People are dumb. People are weird. Yeah, I already placed that order. I'm going to... Uh, I'm quickly save. Uh, I'm not going to do any of the glitches that you can see in, like, speedruns and shit of this game, because I'm not smart enough to do them, unfortunately. Uh, if I can, like, show them off, well, like that one, I guess. Then I'll, I'll, I'll try them out. Also, <laughs> unintentional reference, because <laughs> the stream started at 11 today. Started at 11 in the morning for me. But yeah, no, I kind of wish that they had done, like, the color splash. It's also kind of funny that people were saying that the remake was a revival of the series when Origami King came out in 2020, lol. Like, it's still- yeah, it's not a dead franchise, it's just people are, like... They- they- If you look on, like, the Paper Mario subreddit, which is a fucking comedy mine, by the way, it's hilarious. Um, you'll see that, like, people split the games into, like, two eras, where you have the Paper era and the RPG era. The RPG area era is kind of 64, TTYD, and Super, while the uh, paper era is Sticker Star, Color Splash, and Origami King. And, I mean, I, I understand where they're coming from. They kind of play differently. Origami King and Thousand Year Door play nothing alike. Well, not entirely, at least. The battle mechanics are wildly different, and, like, the gameplay feels different enough to be, like, noticeable. Because after, after, after the remake was announced, I played the first two acts of Origami King to kind of refresh my memory of what it was like. And by the way, I fucking love, I love, love, love the way that Origami King feels. It feels fantastic. Everything is super snappy and quick and sharp. It feels nice to control. Mario's jumps feel super satisfying. His hammer hits feel super satisfying. And I just kind of wish the game... I, I really wish that Thousand Year Door kind of looked more like it. But I'm also not, like, upset about the way it looks. Uh, that's weird. I always thought the Wanted posters looked kind of interesting. Yeah, no, the, the Paper Mario fan base. Like, there's memes going around where it's like, uh, no one hates the Paper Mario fan base or the Paper Mario games more than the Paper Mario fan base. And it's like, yes and no. Yes, because, like, they complain about everything. Everything. I swear to God, there wasn't a, there's not a single thing that I haven't been, that I haven't seen, like, a complaint about on the Reddit. But, um, 
at the same time. Like, they complain because they're super passionate about it, and I understand why they do. Because, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, it's something that you love. You don't want it to, like, kind of see it go downhill or degrade in quality at all. The funny thing is that, uh, like the set, like the, a couple of minutes after the remake trailer dropped, uh, I saw someone say, this is the first time that we're seeing Goombella's butt, and I'm like, no, it was, it's weird, it's weird, people are weird, people are so strange, I'm super fascinated, I, I love people watching on Twitter, that's the only reason I'm still on there anymore. Mm. Dear everybody who's watching this who wants to get invested in the game. Uh, wrong place, sorry. <laughs> I'm certain there's someone else that is streaming the entire game. That is, uh, paying attention to the story. I've just played this game so fucking often that I, I, I know everything already. I'm, uh, I'm a little worried about the lighting engine that they're injecting into the, into it, basically. Because, um... Like this, this room in the remake, from what from in from in the trailer, is super dark now. So I like, you know, the fact that there's so many things from like all the different areas. Like you have the the little rocks from the punies. Uh, you have the little rock from. <laughs> gamers gamers across the world cheered Oz. Finally, Nintendo gave him Gumbella with a hyper-realistic 3D ass. Just what the series needed. You're so correct. You're absolutely right. That's exactly what people wanted. Yeah. There is something that this game does that I'm super fucking upset that they've pretty much removed from Origami King, and that's Forced fucking tutorials and unskippable text. Look at that. Beautiful. I know how to play the game, and I'm already getting into it. I'm already getting into the game. This is great. There's a lot of games that have forced tutorials that drive me fucking crazy. Now, I, I don't know where everything is, uh, because there's just a lot of stuff that you collect that I just cannot remember where everything is. So, if I don't collect- if I don't get every star piece or every shine sprite, then I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Um, there's a lot of boss fights that I'm like super- I'm super worried about uh, Key Hall Key, because I love Key Hall Key. I'm super worried about that for the remake, because there's a lot of cave- like, half of that fucking entire chapter is just in a dark cave, and, like, the area already in this, in this version, is dark enough. The lighting engine that they're including makes me worry that it's gonna be that much darker. Also, like, um... I really have no idea how many people noticed this in the fucking trailer, but, um, when you launch Koops in the remake, there's like a little green circle that appears underneath Mario. And I'm just so confused about that because why would you need a green circle to kind of tell you where you're gonna land when you can't move during that at all? Like, you're locked into the animation, so why the fuck do you need- is it for people to remember where they shot Koops from? Which, if so, it's not that hard to forget. Like, it's really not. It's so strange. So, uh, what I'm hoping is they give the option to remove that. Because it's a, re a completely unnecessary de design choice that makes no sense. 
I I'm sure it'll be a benefit to those who are new to the game, but I don't know. You know, you gotta- you should- you should include something like that for like... But yeah, it's um, the scene where um... Hold on, let me actually... Uh, let me see. Let me actually pull it up then. If people aren't really familiar with it. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, see, see, right, see right here. You can see a green circle. And um... I, I really have no idea what the fucking point of that is. But yeah, you can see- you can see right there. I, I- I have to only assume that it's either to tell you where you are... Or, um, it's to, like, show where you fired coops from, which, I either way, no matter which way you look at it, it's a really stupid option, because, like, half the time you're gonna be shooting him at these blocks, so he'll just come right back anyways. Like, it's, a it's so confusing. Like, look at those fucking creases, dude. It everything looks like paper cutouts, it looks super nice. Is it like part of the sparkle anime? No, that's the thing, is that it's it's a distinct circle that, that appears. Like... I, maybe, though. Maybe. I have no idea. I doubt it, but like... You know, I just can't help but think it's a weird accessibility thing. That they're adding for no reason that feels more condescending than, like, accessibility. But yeah, like, like, you, like you said, Psychodactyl, it might be a part of the fucking... Uh animation it might just be a part of um i think it's just a weird accessibility thing that they're including because um crash 4 did that in the demo where they had a yellow circle around you to like show you kind of where you're where you are in the game on the on the floor essentially if you're jumping so part of me thinks it's something more akin to that but at the same time i, I don't know right i don't know i i'm just assuming i'm making speculation I wonder if they'll fix that. I wonder if they'll fix that little bug that goes on that's like a known thing in this game where if you uh, jump off a moving platform like that, all your partners fucking flop off. So it's, it's a weird little bug, but uh, it's, it's fun. Yeah, basically, all of my like complaints about the remake that I've seen from the trailer is all just a bunch of, like, aesthetical shit that I hope can be disabled. Like the green circle and shit. Other than that, I really don't have a whole lot of complaints. Part of me also kind of hopes that they, like, pull a Mario RPG and they, like, give you the option to switch back to the original soundtrack as well. Just because I'll be nostalgic for it and I'll be like, oh, I wish I was listening to the original just to, like, hear the difference. Up, up. Yeah. When we get to like having coops in the party, I'll talk more about the like coops thing, the green circle, the the evil green circle. Seeing so an emotion, it feels weird. It looked great if it wasn't a static green circle and had a gradient animation to it or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's. I don't really personally need accessibility features in games. I'm pretty adept at playing games by my own, by my onesies, essentially. But um, I understand why some people would want that sort of thing. But like, how how do you like inject that into the game design without it feeling weird? You know, it's just one of those things that like you can't have. It's weird to like kind of inject accessibility stuff like that into the game without it feeling just a little. Weird. I'll say, I'll say weird because like I don't want to say Andre because that's such a buzzword now. Hey, little guy. Do I do everything the way the design is intended to, or do I just play the game the normally? Is the question. So do I go talk to like the black chest and then get the key, or do I just get the key? It's a mystery. I've been seeing a lot of speculation as well that people are like, oh, the Switch 2 is going to come out before Mario RPG and it's going to have color-designated buttons. And I'm like, hmm, I don't think so. Because they're, like, announcing games for the Switch in 2020 that are coming out in 2024. Why are they going to release a new console after that? They're going to, like, kind of slow down the, 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 the announcing of games at this point if they're going to launch a new console in November. 
I think they're just, Nintendo's just like, okay, or at least the developers, not Nintendo's, like, corporate. The developers are kind of like, at this point, okay, well, you know what? It's, it doesn't hurt anybody, let's just give them colors. Let's make them fun. Let's have fun with the UI again. But something that I've noticed a lot is that, like, people are complaining about Nintendo's UI and how boring it looks. Which, uh, god, now, now I gotta, like, fucking meander at the, uh, remake trailer every couple of hours. Yeah, the, uh, the actual, like, battle UI looks different, too. You know? Like, look, look at that comparatively. Which, I mean, I'm fine with the, with them changing the, like, part, position of, like, the partner slot in the battle, because, you know, 16 by 9 screen. But, um, at the same time, I don't know, it's a little weird. It'll, it'll fuck me up for a little bit, having everything so streamlined. It's a, it's a change I'm happy about, but it's gonna fuck me up for a bit. God damn, that looks so good. Uh, I really cannot get over just how nice everything looks in the- in the fucking trailer. They really went all out making it look pretty. The way that Nintendo has done button prompts with the Switch is great, showing the position of the button instead of a symbol it has. Th later games, later games are doing that. Early Switch games still did, like, the press A to do the thing. Like, after I want to say probably... 2018 is when they started doing, like, the... Uh, the press top button to do thing because i was playing odyssey a few days back and i noticed hey this this game is like very clear about like the what what the actual like letter buttons are uh. but i agree i i like the, i like that they're doing that instead because like they they changed the fucking position of the buttons or they the uh, what's, what, are, what exactly am I trying to say here? The way they designed the Switch controller is the same as the Super Nintendo controller in that the X and Y and the A and B are swapped comparatively to the Xbox controller. And uh, as a result, it's... Oh, shit. I just realized. Sorry, everybody. Uh, I'll try not to do that again. Uh, so as a result, people are like... I remember a lot of people were saying, well, it, it fucks me up because I, I never know where it is. Because it's such a weird position. And I get it. I get fucked up too if I play a, a Switch game for a long enough time. I like this guy. This guy's one of my favorite fucking characters, actually. I really like him a lot. Oh boy, did you fall for it. I like this guy a lot. Oh, fuck. Sorry, everybody. Yes, I get it. It's terrible. You, you might return the normal, and then you return the normal. Like, ugh. Like, I, I get it, little buddy. I get it. You're a little bastard. What was that guy's beef? Oh yeah. I'm super I'm super excited to be able to like get my hands on the Thousand Year Dork. So pro that'll probably be like one of the first games that I ever actually pre-order. I I just sincerely hope the pre-order if there is a pre-order bonus, I hope it's good. 
I doubt there will be because Nintendo doesn't seem like they're keen on doing pre-order bonuses for their remakes. Although they did it for Metroid Prime Remastered, so maybe. At least I think they did. Did they? I can't remember. Well, I mean, could, yeah. You get a stack of fucking A4 printer paper. That's not far off what I fu- Oh, it pissed me off. When Origami King released, you know what the UK got? They got fucking nice origami paper for the characters so that you could, like, make them in real life. You know what fucking Canada got? Canada fucking postcards. <laughs> fucking postcards, dude. What am I supposed to do with that? I would not be surprised though if they did um I'm I'm so mad I'm actually mad about that. I'm fucking livid about that. That's the only reason I didn't pre-order Origami King. Aside from the fact that I also didn't have a switch at that time. <laughs> but um yeah, that pissed me off super bad. What I'd love for them to do is do something with the map. This map is so iconic that you could do something as a pre-order bonus super easily. A poster, a fucking mat. A fuck, just a, a piece of paper that just has a PNG of the map on it. Anything. Like, it's so iconic. Bam! The location of your star has been fucking shot into the map. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they're gonna reuse the lines from, um... Thousand Year Door for the remake, or if they're gonna get the new guy to do Mario's lines. And if so, that's gonna sound so weird. I love a lot of the music in this game too. God damn. I also like that fucking bird. Gus. He's an asshole. Treasure map. <laughs> Dinner map to go with the Tears of the Kingdom knife and spoon. That would actually be awesome if Nintendo did that. That'd be like a fun, you know, wink. Being like, okay, you know what? The 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 cut the cutlery set for Tears of the Kingdom that was a little silly, but listen, you know we're we're aware of it. They wouldn't do that though. I know there's probably someone on Etsy or something that like will hand paint like a massive mural of the TTYD map. Which if so, that would not be bad to put on my wall. I would actually really like that, especially if I could like frame it and shit. That'd be awesome. And <laughs> the Metroid bib. Would you, like, theoretically at some point, with all, like, concept- with all these conceptions for, like, pre-order bonuses, could you theoretically, like, um... Basically furnish your house with, like, Nintendo-branded products? So, like, could you imagine, like, a... Uh... Because they renewed the- the... Trademark for Tamadachi Life, a Tamadachi Life bowl. With just a, like, default me stoic face on it. So as you're, like, eating your cereal or drinking your soup, you just have the face staring right back at you. Wait a fuck, wait a sec. Hold on a good. Hold on a sec, guys. Fuck me. You know what I think I just realized? Like, I, this is a, like a live realization. No, okay, no, never mind. I thought I figured something out. I thought the, um... I thought that this little fucking, um... I thought that that was like the world map for Paper Mario 64. But uh, no, it's not, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's a bit of a different map. Right? But it is actually like uh, a weird 4 by 16 by 9 ratio ETYD map. Everything matches pretty one to one. 
you know. I, 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 th I could have sworn that that was the fucking 64 map, though. Eh. It might be like an earlier version of it. But you can kind of tell, you can see. Like, the moon is the same. This dark patch matches th this dark patch. And like, this white here matches this white here. So. Sorry, I, I thought I had figured something out for a sec. Mario, the Mario Wonder speaking flower toilet ring. Ugh, I'd, I'd hate that. I'd hate if the talking flower like commentaried over my fucking shitting. Like, whoa, that's a that's a big beef and log. Like, ugh, girl, sh shut up, stop. On the note of Mario Wonder, I will say that those um, I don't know if I said this already, but yeah, those uh, those talking flowers, I did not like them from, like from the start. I was like. Mm. I'm so thirsty. Fuck, fuck you for making me remember that. Fuck you. Actually, I'm like, I'm, I'm considering banning you from chat now. Fuck you for making me remember that. I hate you. I hate you for fucking reminding me of that. How dare you? I'm a thirsty little flower. You have to use your pee. Ugh. Bastard. Bastard Psychodactyl. Alright, let's fucking move on. Wow. Wait, no, you're fucking kidding me. Did they actually say that in the fucking trailer? That's in the game? Okay, to be fair, fucking the context that like we- that you had brought it up on- behind. Is what I'm really getting at, but like still, that's that's evil if that's actually in the game. Oh my fucking god, no, it's somehow worse. Unless like you're talking about a different line, but like they clearly say that um <laughs> you share your water with me. That's this is evil. I, I like how he's completely covered, by the way. That rocks. God damn. Ah, oh, fuck, I just did the badge tutorial. Fuck! I didn't want to do the badge tutorial. I really, it's right up there with like the Materia tutorial. It's super fucking irritating to me. Like, I, I get it. Even when I was like a child, I was like, okay. I get this. I know how to like kind of equip it. Alright. That's Mario after he absorbs the power of the Chaos Emeralds. Yeah. <laughs> like that uh, green Mario? Yeah. I'm excited for them to finally create like some new Mario colors, like uh Periwinkle Mario and Asbestos Pink Mario. That's gonna be exciting. Yeah, hold on. There's a guy down here that I wanna like smash with my hammer. Uh yeah. And there's the Mario that saw 9-11 attack. Oh shit. Then there's the Mario that saw his mother die. Pink. Oh shit, you know what? Let's tattle him, I haven't tattled him yet. I think a large reason as to what uh, the, the problem that people have with um, Origami King's battle system is that it, may, it forces the battles to be longer than 30 seconds. Which is like what people generally accept to be like the ideal time for RPG like standard battles to be. Like not, not something like this, this is a boss fight. Like uh, the, the spiky Goomba that I just fought, like that, that took like 5 seconds, 15 seconds, it was super quick. 
But, um, yeah. Origami King, every fight took me, like, 45 seconds to a minute and 30, probably. Mario Wahlberg in his new form after he eats the Marky Mark flower. Yeah. And then there's, um, Seth Rogen Mario, who, uh, eats the weed flower. And then becomes Seth Rogen. You can't forget about, uh, Michael Sarah Mario. Or he just becomes, like, an awkward teenager. <laughs> yeah, the weed flower, yeah. That's a real hilarious, real peak, peak comedy there. Weed? Weed? Funny weed guys? Guys, I smoke? I smoke the weed? What would you guys do if Mario smoked the weed? Imagine that one. That's never been- that, that joke's never been made before. If Mario did the mushroom? But it's not like a, a mushroom fungus, it's mushroom the drug. You guys get it? I know guys, I'm just peak comedy today. Alright, let's let's show these suckers what it can really be do. Bonk. Alright, let's hang a smash. I'd actually I'd I'd really like to do a, like a Paper Mario randomizer at some point, but I don't know how to set something like that up. Game theory, what if Paper Mario in his trip after eating the mushroom and get high? Game theory, what if the Mario but uh not New Yorkian? What if the Mario but communism? Looking back on it, like, MatPat's old Mario theories that I remember I liked a lot, like, the Mario's a communist one, and, um, Mario is, like, secretly evil, or Mario's mental theories, part one and two. Like, those are classics in my mind. I, I I still, like, I have a lot of nostalgia for them, but god, they are actual shit. They are awful. Because they're completely founded on, like, stupid bullshit that, like, he took way too seriously. 